Hey, Justin here. We're back in the lab at Amplified Parts today to talk a little bit about speaker selection. We've already done a couple videos about things related to this, but this is kind of the final video in the series. These are just a series of questions you'll ask yourself when you're trying to determine what speaker is right for you. And they're all pretty simple questions, but they're all things you need to consider. Let's hop into it. So the first thing we're going to talk about is speaker size or the diameter of the speaker that's in your amp or you're looking to put in your cabinet. Now the common size speakers for guitar amps are usually 6, 8, 10, 12, and 15 inches. Sometimes you get big old 18s in bass cabs and PA cabs, but those are much less common, the, the big, big 18s. So if you're wanting to determine what the diameter of your speaker is roughly, you can just grab yourself a tape measure like this one and a speaker like this one, preferably the speaker that's already in your amp, and kind of take a measurement. As you can see, we're looking at right around 12 inches. So this is definitely a 12 inch speaker. And you know, that's something you're gonna wanna know when you're selecting your next speaker. So the next thing you're gonna wanna try and figure out is the impedance of the speaker that you need. So you can do a couple different things. You can check the existing speaker in your amp we actually have a video that shows you how to determine the speaker's impedance if it's not marked in any way. As you can see here though, this one is marked 16 ohms. So if this is the stock speaker, more than likely that means that the output of your amp is 16 ohms going into a 16 ohm speaker. If you have multiple speakers, that may be different. You know, and we did show you in another video how to wire say a 212 cab in series parallel to get different ohm loads. So that might help you as well. If you have a multi-tap transformer, usually you're doing pretty good because that means it gives you a much wider array of options for speaker impedance. You know, you might have taps on the back of your amp or jacks that just say four, eight, 16 ohm, et cetera. In that case, then that gives you a much wider range of the speakers you can buy depending on how you're gonna wire it to achieve a match. So now you know the speaker size, you've checked that out you know, the speaker impedance of say your existing speaker or what you're going for for speaker impedance. Now the next thing is gonna be the output of your amp, the output wattage versus the wattage of your speakers. You know, you may have an amp that's like this little Fender Princeton over here, and that's only a five watt amp. So, you know, you're gonna to wanna, to, the, the recommendation is generally to double it. So, you know, if you have a five watt amp, you wanna have at least a 10 watt speaker, you know. More than likely like this one here probably has at least a 25 watt speaker in it. You know, and you get into the other amps that we have sitting behind us, like this boogie, it's putting out 65 watts. It's a 112. So you want to try and go definitely higher than that 65 watt output. You kind of want to double it. So you're looking at like, let's just say at least a hundred watt speaker and you'd be in the right ballpark. Uh, same can be said for like the little hundred waters over here, you know, the Marshall and the basement, you know, you're going to be looking at a hundred watts of output. So, you know, if you have a 212 cab that you're hooking up to these, uh, to this amp, you can kind of break that up because the power is going to get distributed between the two speakers. So if you've got 100 watts coming out, 50 watts is going to go to one speaker, 50 watts is going to go to the other. So in that case, you would want to get, say, 200 watt speakers to kind of double it. Um, you know, if you were going out from, from this into a 412, then it would get broken down. It would be... 25 watts would be going to each speaker so you could maybe use slightly lower rated speakers. You know, that's kind of how that works. And you know, the other thing you have to consider is that you could go low or really close to the output wattage of your amp and you might get more speaker breakup, but this might not be desirable and it could definitely shorten the life of your speakers. Some people like that dirt and grind though, so it's up to you really. So the first speaker magnet type that we're gonna talk about is gonna be Alnico. That stands for aluminum, nickel, and cobalt. Uh, this is one of the oldest speaker types that you'll find in guitar amps. It's gonna have that classic old tone. It's definitely got a warmer and sweeter vibe at low volumes. Uh, I think when you dig into these and really crank them, they break up like crazy. Uh, they definitely have a lower power handling, so you, know, you gotta consider that. Um, a lot of old combo amps like Fenders, you know, the old Fender Tweeds, they were all using Alnicos. And ceramic hadn't even been developed yet, so that's probably why it was more like necessity. But now you're just going to associate that Alnico sound with those old Tweed amps and stuff of that nature. Um, like I said, it's going to be 
Definitely warmer and sweeter at low volumes, break up nice and hard when you dig into it. It's very touch sensitive. Um, one of the other employees here, Clark, he actually refers to it as like driving a stick shift. And, you know, like using an Alico speaker is like driving a stick shift and using a ceramic, which we'll talk about next, is like driving an automatic. Uh, and that's about it for the Alnico. Next one we're going to talk about is the ceramic. Now, the ceramic is probably one of the most common that you're going to see nowadays. Um, it was developed as a cheaper alternative to Alnico, and it definitely is. You're going to find that the cost on ceramic speakers is usually much less. Um, a little heavier, too but they can handle a lot more power. So, you know, another thing to consider, if you have an amp that's putting out a ton of power and you want the speaker to be able to handle it and retain any clarity, the ceramic's a good way to go. I find that sometimes they're a little brighter than Alnico's. And, you know, I mean, you can, you can generate a wide variety of tones of them. I mean, they're capable of doing a whole lot. They're a great all-around speaker versus an Alnico. You know, it's, this is a good all-arounder. Another thing that the ceramic speakers are good for is uh, is pedals. You know, if you got a clean amp and you're very pedal heavy, then you know um, a ceramic speaker is going to react a lot better than an Alnico in that regard. You know, in terms of retaining clarity and and all that. So the last speaker type we're going to talk about is going to be neodymium. Now this is probably the newest out of the three that we're going to show you in terms of you know new technology and speakers. Um, it uses a very small magnet, as you can see. You don't need much of the Neo element to um, make this speaker move. And as a result, these are about 50% lighter than other speakers. I mean, they're ridiculously light. So if weight is a concern, if you got some back problems, you don't want to lug your big twin reverb into a gig, you want to lighten it up, this is a good way to do it. Cost-wise, they're kind of somewhere in between a ceramic and an Alnico. And as far as um, being touch responsive, stuff of that nature, they're right in between a ceramic and an Alnico. They're, they're great. They got a nice, even frequency range. They're a good, solid speaker. Check them out. They're pretty cool, and they will definitely lighten up the load of your amp. So we showed you the three speakers, um, the three different magnet types, and talked a little bit about the response they have, cost, etc. Um, really, everything else is up to you. I mean, you're really going to, if you want a British tone, you might want to go with something like a Celestian or an Eminence that has uh, kind of a British flavor. If you want that classic American tone, you might end up going with a Jensen. They're definitely nice and clear. Classic American, you find them in most of the Fender amps. You find Celestians in a lot of the British amps. Um, like I said, it, all of that stuff's up to you. I mean, you can... You can get on the internet, you can hop on to, you know, jensentone.com, you can check out speaker samples and all that, all that good stuff, and you can look at all the different specs, and you can do that on most of the speaker sites. They're going to have a whole lot of info, and you can kind of get in there, dig in, and see what appeals to you most in terms of the tone you're looking for. So that's it for this video. Armed with this one, and all the other videos that we've done relating to this subject, you should be able to choose the speaker that's just right for you with no issues. Of course, if you have any other questions, you can leave a comment below this video, or you can reach out to us through AmplifiedParts.com. We'd be glad to answer any questions. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we're always putting up new videos, and you want to be caught up on the latest ones we're doing. And you can find us on Twitter, Tumblr, and also Facebook. Be sure to check it out. Thanks.